Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is July 16th. In 1945, the Trinity nuclear test plunged humanity into the so-called atomic age. The first ever nuclear bomb was detonated in New Mexico at the Alamogordo test range, nicknamed the Gadget. The plutonium-based implosion-type device yielded 19 kilotons, creating a crater over 300 meters wide. U.S. efforts to develop nuclear weapons were driven by the fear that Nazi Germany would soon be able to do so. German chemist and Nobel Prize laureate Otto Hahn and his assistant Fritz Strauman, helped by the Austrian-born physicist Lise Meitner, had produced the world's first nuclear fission in late 1938. Following this discovery, Albert Einstein sent a letter to U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt warning him about the threat of a German nuclear weapons program and urging the United States to speed up its own efforts. Germany had indeed conducted nuclear research, but only a handful of scientists were assigned to the task. Their efforts were largely unsuccessful and scaled it down after 1942. The United States, by contrast, invested essentially unlimited manpower and industrial resources into the Manhattan Project, which started in 1942. Its headquarters was a newly established Los Alamos nuclear facility in New Mexico. Robert Oberthammer led the group of 6,000 scientists at Los Alamos and was the project's scientific head. Three weeks after the test on 6th and 9th of August, nuclear bombs, one of them based on the Trinity design, were dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing tens of thousands of civilians immediately and many more from radiation exposure later. Trinity was one of the first of over 2,000 nuclear tests to be conducted worldwide, with over 1,000 in the U.S. nuclear testing program alone. The tests released vast amounts of radioactivity around the globe. They also spurred the proliferation of nuclear weapons hundreds of times more powerful than the earliest prototypes. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the CTBT, bans all forms of nuclear testing. The United States was the first country to sign it when it opened for signature on September 24, 1996. Today, however, is one of the eight countries that still have to ratify the CTBT before it can enter into force. The others are China, the Democratic Republic's Republic of Korea, Egypt, India, Iran, Israel, and Pakistan. And the next time you're frantically rushing to plug your parking meter, you can curse Carl C. McGee because it was on this day in 1935 that McGee's parking meters made their world debut, much to the chagrin of future drivers everywhere. The first three decades of the 20th century saw the rise of the automobile and along with it the rise of parking congestion. Throughout the 1910s and 20s, parking in America's major cities was largely a chaotic mess. Many municipalities tried to regulate the disordered cluster of parked cars that would flood into American downtowns by simply banning cars outright. On April 10th of 1920, the city of Los Angeles even banned all parking downtown during daytime hours. Needless to say, this didn't go over so well. After many very public protests, including parades of cars streaming through downtown LA, the ban was lifted before the month was through. Astonishingly, it wasn't until the middle of the Great Depression that the first parking meter would be installed anywhere in the United States. Many cities and towns did their best to regulate parking with the posted time restrictions, but those were incredibly difficult to police. The automation of the parking meter would allow for the kind of watchful robot eye that made enforcement more consistent and harder for drivers to argue with. On July 16th, the first parking meter was placed in Oklahoma City in an effort to instill some order to the chaos of street parking. It was the brainchild of attorney, newspaper man, and sometimes inventor Carl C. McGee who would go on to file a design patent for his parking meter late in 1935. It was granted the following year. McGee started the Park-O-Meter Company and was successful in not only landing larger contracts with Oklahoma City, but with many towns around the country. The, immediate, the idea was immediately popular among towns strapped for cash and garnered some national press. The October 1935 issue of Modern Mechanics magazine included a short piece about the new nickel meters that had popped up in Oklahoma City, explaining that five cents would buy you anything from 15 minutes to an hour depending on where you were in the city. 
but his 1935 conception wasn't the first time McGee had dreamed of a parking meter for the streets of the future. McGee filed for a patent in early parking meter back in 1932, which wouldn't be granted until 1936. His early conception looked something like a mailbox, with much more boxy design than he would concoct just a few years later. The parking meter was considered a success in Oklahoma City that it quickly swept the nation. Before the 1930s were finished, virtually every major, every major city had embraced the parking meter as a way to regulate parking in what was a classic tragedy of the common situation. McGee's invention was completely mechanical, but by the 1980s, some digital models started showing up on American streets. Today, of course, a parking meter has moved away from the cash model to one that accepts credit cards. Some digital credit card-friendly machines even monitor an entire street. These hulking contraptions continue to evolve with the times, but one can't help but worry what Hollywood might do should they remake Cool Hand Luke. Today's meters seem like they'd be very difficult to behead. And finally, can you imagine America without Washington, D.C. as its capital? Surprisingly, Washington, D.C. has not been the only capital this country has ever had. However, it has been the centerpiece of U.S. politics for almost 230 years. Check out what happened on this day when Washington, D.C. became the nation's capital. It was July 16, 1790, when Congress agreed that Washington, D.C. would be the perfect spot for the capital of the United States. Crazily enough, the government had already established a temporary capital the previous year in New York City. Things changed when President George Washington was sworn at Federal Hall in New York. It was Washington's duty to find a lasting spot for the nation's capital. That's when the president declared that the capital should be placed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for a decade before it would be relocated to the Potomac area. This is crazy. Washington decided that the marshy, hot, and grimy region located in the middle of Maryland, Virginia, would be a great place for the capital of the United States. Named after Washington himself, Washington, D.C. was originally called the District of Columbia. Since the capital was strategically placed near the Potomac River, Washington believed that burgeoning the city had a potential to become an economic powerhouse. In 1791, Washington commissioned French engineer Pierre Charles L'Enfant to create an architectural plan for Washington, D.C. Two years later, the first keystone was laid down in the foundation of the White House. Ironically, America's first president never actually resided in the mansion himself. This was because the White House wasn't move-in ready until the turn of the century. In 1800, John and Abigail Adams became the White House's first tenants. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening, and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com The First Atomic Bomb Test at CTBTO.org The World's First Parking Meter at Gizmodo.com And Congress Declares Washington, D.C. is New Capital at History101.com The music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.